Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Zimin Zhang, Professor of Peking University to give the next talk. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. Thank you very much. And uh, it's a great honor to have the opportunity to present our work in this uh, very interesting online meeting, especially uh, this presentation was uh, done together with Aviv and Miriad, uh, the two scientists I respect the most. So what I uh, plan to talk about is uh, the tumor microenvironment and how they are related to immunotherapies and how different cancer types may have different properties in the tumor microenvironment. Uh, before I do that, so let me just uh, show my disclosure. I'm essentially uh, involved in two different companies, uh, founder, scientific advisor, and editorial biosciences, and I'm also a board member for InnoCare. So uh, as we have known um, from the previous two speakers that the tumor microenvironment is a very complex tissue. Um, inside the tumor, it's not just a collection of tumor cells. In fact, there is very complex. There are many immune infiltrations in the tumor. And um, so we actually need to understand the tumor microenvironment in a very detailed fashion for us to define strategies to perturb the tumor microenvironment to allow immunotherapies. So uh, in the past few years, my lab has been focusing on uh, answering uh, some basic questions about the TME regarding their specific immune uh, compositions, if you have any special functions, uh, where do the cells come from, where do they go, and uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what are the cell-cell interactions are like, and uh, most importantly, how they are related to uh, clinical parameters, including how they respond to uh, immunotherapies. Um, so, so here, essentially, the outline and the key points in my talk. Um, the number one is that I want to mention that TME harbors multiple unique properties, which is also uh, illustrated by the two speakers. And uh, we can find multiple cancer specific cell types. And also different cancer types may have very distinct properties in a TME. And I will also want to mention uh, our work on understanding the various factors influencing TME. And uh, finally, uh, I want to uh, describe how the cell types may be related to immunotherapy responses. So, so here uh, is probably not a surprise now that single cell is extremely powerful as illustrated by a Aviv uh, talk. So essentially what we're, do we're doing is take a given tumor types, we will take multiple uh, uh, cancer related tissues ranging from tumor adjacent normal tissues a lymph nodes, ascites, blood, and so on and so forth um, to, to profile, go through the single cell sequencing so that we can understand those unique cell types, the tissue compositions, cell-cell interaction, the marker gene identification. Then you can repeat this for multiple tumor uh, indications so that we can have a more systematic view of the tumor-related tissues. Um, so by doing this, this we, we essentially started uh, by studying the T cell properties, then we gradually uh, broaden to include all uh, um, tumor uh, uh, immune types. So what we, what we found early on is that uh, different cancer types uh, ranging from colon cancer, liver cancer, and lung cancer, if you simply look at the blood samples, the differences between them is actually very small. But if you look at the normal tissue, uh, either um, then the immune, uh, the T cell composition are actually very different, indicating that tissue themselves play a very important role shaping the infiltrating immune cells. But if you look at tumor themselves, on top of the tumor related differences, there are more dramatic differences that you start to see many tumor specific uh, uh, cell types. So it seems like the tumor microenvironment may be in influenced by the combination of the tissue location as well as cancer cells. From those, you can identify different uh, uh, immune cell types that seem to be specific or at least enriched in tumor. For example, we talk about, um, we all know the exhausted T cells are heavily enriched um, in, uh, in tumors. But uh, in addition to that, we also see a lot of activated Tregs in the tumor. And also the TH1-like cells and the LAM3DC, which I believe is what Miriam talked about as MREG DC. Um, in addition, you have SPP1 plus tumor social macrophage here or C1QC10 here. So the, all those cells have very preferential presence or very specific in tumor location. 
These actually provide great opportunities to find novel targets because if there are those are specific enriching tumor, that really means they are doing something special in tumor. Either they are uh, pro provide a more of a pro tumor function or a pro in in uh, inflammation kind of function. So these provide opportunities for us to find specific genes in those cell types to find with uh, perturb those cells. So indeed, for example, if you have uh, exhausted T cells. This implies, of course, you can try to uh, reverse or prevent T cell exhaustion for activate T-Rex, which provide uh, the more suppressive role in the tumor microenvironment. We will try to deplete those activated T-Rex, or maybe we can try to activate those uh, more uh, beneficial cell types like TH1-like cells, or maybe modulate such uh, LAM3 DC or MREG DC here. Okay, so um, some of the uh, strategies uh, Targeting, uh, targeting these cell types have been very successful in the clinics. Some others are in the trials. So the, we want to take it one step further and ask a question uh, that should all, uh, would all um, uh, cancer types benefit in the same fashion uh, by some of the strategies. So we have found that some of the cell types, when they are found, they are typically found in a one given cell uh, cancer indication. For example, we initially uh, uh, identified the LAMP3DC from liver cancer only. For the uh, uh, tumor social macrophage, we identify SPP1 macrophage from colon cancer. And so those are found in individual tumor types. We want to ask a question if those are uh, universal or specific to some of the cancer types. How do you answer that question? The, the way to do that is actually to uh, study uh, multiple cancer types at the same time. That's why we started uh, several types of pan cancer analysis of infiltrating immune cells. For infiltrating myeloid cells, for example, if you simply profile multiple uh, cell types, you can find that uh, some of the cell types, LAM3DC, seem to be universal in all uh, cancer types. Some other cell types, like SPP macrophage here, are only detected in about 50% of the cancer indication. So these seems to be more cancer specific. But for, for even for some of the uh, cells that appear to be universal, their abundance may vary a lot. Again, LAM3DC, if you look at their distributions across all these cancer indications, there is a dramatic differences. NPC has a lot, stomach cancer has a lot, but other cell, cell types don't have a lot. So if you don't have a strategy perturbing LAM3DC, then uh, these cancer indications or patient selection should be factored in here. Similarly, uh, we can uh, uh, look at the T cells um, in a, a more broader view. So here we essentially constructed a pan-cancer T cell atlas by collecting uh, published T cell data set and also generating our own, uh, our own data sets. We constructed a very broad um, pan-cancer T cell atlas covering 21 cancer types uh, from over 300 patients here. Now, uh, we uh, take those CD8 and CD4 cells, we can uh, divide those in multiple different clusters. Again, you can see that terminal exhausted T cells that seem to be very specific in tumor and activated T-Rex also seem to have very strong uh, cancer preference. So here, just to give some examples here, exhausted T cells is actually one cell types that we pay a lot of attention to, but their presence are, are again, not quite universal. Those cell types seem to be highly abundant in liver cancer, esophageal carcinoma, head and neck cancer, renal cancer, but not so much in multiple myeloma and breast cancer. So again, this may impact how the therapeutic strategies should be chosen for different kinds of cancer types. Activated T-Rex, uh, again, very important, but those are more abundant in nasopharyngeal carcinoma, liver cancer, and, and so on and so forth, but not so much in breast cancer and stomach cancer. Okay, so some other cell types seem to be more uh, immune specific or cancer type specific. So this should be uh, uh, kept in mind when developing uh, more precise immunotherapy strategies. But we also ask the question, what really caused such differences? and what makes these cell types uh, more abundant in one location versus another. So we start to um, understand this. It actually turned out to be not an easy uh, question to, to answer. Um, so with an uh, increasing amount of data uh, spanning through multiple patients, we can start to draw the kind of correlations 
of different factors and that may be related to the abundance of different cell types. So here, using a pan cancer T cell analysis, we start to see, you know, what are the other indications, uh, parameters that may be correlated with the uh, presence of the cell types. But we found a small number of correlation, not many. For example, here, we found out that, that the, the, uh, the, the BMI index seemed to be correlated with the frequency of TFH cell types. And um, the tumor mutation burden, uh, of course, is a very important factor that's commonly used as a biomarker for immunotherapy responses. When, when we look at how is the TMB related to other cell types, the only thing that seems to be correlated is, is the TH1-like cells. So this might be important because we all know, you know why, why would the TMB be important for immunotherapy efficacy? How is that related to T cells? We think that maybe TH1-like cells maybe uh, serve as a link between the, the TMB and the T cell properties. But, but still, you can see that most of the cell types, we still don't really know how their frequencies are related or determined by different factors. So we need to find a way to really understand this, but how do you do that? It's, it's hard to compare to, uh, the TME properties across tumor. For example, if you take the, uh, the tumor samples on colon uh, patient cancer patients and liver cancer patients, it's hard to compare those head on because there are so many differences. You're dealing with different cancer types, you're dealing with different tumor niche, and then also dealing with different uh, genetic background because those are from different patients. Uh, but perhaps we can come up with, uh, with scenarios where, where we can somewhat reduce that level of complexity so that we can directly compare those. The, uh, the colon cancer with the liver metastasis is actually uh, provides such an interesting model because you have essentially, you have largely the same cancer cells in two different locations, but then also you have the same genetic background, but two different kinds of tissue niche. So if we take those tumor samples and uh, survey multiple different uh, immune-related locations and by single cell sequencing, then maybe perhaps we can have the data, we can, then we compare, compare such data with patients with only primary tumor in liver or colon loca uh, locations, okay? So here um, we have the single cell data, then uh, we work out a, a bioinformatic tool and develop a tool called phenol aligner, which essentially take a, a cell from metastasis size when we, uh, we compare which of the cells with cells derived from other locations, then we essentially use a key, key nearest of mean, key nearest of mid neighborhood uh, methods to identify what are the other locations that, that provide essentially the same uh, uh, a similar type of uh, 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 transcription patterns. In this way, we can match up uh, or align the phenotypes in one location to another in order to identify if the cells from the metastasis side is uh, more influenced by the uh, uh, each of the uh, by cancer cell types or the tissue uh, or the tissue location, so by doing this, we actually found uh, two different patterns uh, that came uh, came from the uh, uh, cross comparison. Uh, we define some of the types types as the M type. Those seem to be associated with malignancy or cancer cells. Uh, uh, for example, you have exhausted T cells, the Th one like cells, and also activate T-Rex, SPP1 TAMs, those cells seem to be more influenced by the, uh, the, uh, the cancer cells themselves. Then we have other immune cell types that we define as N-type. Those are associated with niche or tissue location. Those uh, cancer types or cell types include uh, cells like uh, mate cells, the intraepithelial leukocyte, the NK cells, and some sub subsets of the macrophage cells here. Okay, so so you can, you can see that cells can be differentially impacted by various internal and external factors here. But those are derived from the uh, cross comparison from tumor samples from the primary uh, liver cancer, primary colon cancer, and the colon cancer with the liver metastasis. Okay, so you can see that the, in, the factors that influence in the tumor <coughs> microenvironment may include cancer cells themselves, this may include specific mutations or tumor mutation burden, or from the tissue niche, that a tissue, uh, this includes some of the tissue specific factors or some other genetic factors or SNPs or BMI or maybe uh, agent sex. But perhaps the factor that may, uh, may be more interesting is how may they be in, uh, impacted by different therapeutics. 
So, uh, so the uh, final few minutes, I want to talk about our work on studying the dynamic changes of uh, tumor microenvironment during immunotherapies uh, with the goal to identify the TME factors that seem to be associated with responses or resistance to therapies. And also we want to identify uh, how those, uh, uh, the, the TME remodel itself during the therapy. So how do you do this? We want to study the uh, dynamic changes of the TME during the therapy. So, so here's one example. If you take lung cancer patients treated with pembrolizumab or the anti-PD-1 antibody, you can take a biopsy sample before treatment and after treatment, and you perform a single cell analysis, and you try to figure out what are the individual cell types that seem to be correlated with responses, and what are the cell types that seem to go through the major changes during the therapy. So I'm not going to summarize uh, some of the complex study into very simple uh, uh, plot here. So for, um, for example, if you take what we define as the uh, uh, exhausted T-cell precursor, and we'll very often call those CXSL13 positive CD8 cells, before treatment, these have a very low level, but after treatment, the responders would have much increased level of such cells, but not so much in the non-responders. So this actually can serve a very effective predictor for, uh, for drug responses. So how, you know, in a way, uh, so essentially the T cells would go through the T cell precursor before they change to exhausted T cells. In a way, it seems like the, when the patient receives the therapy, you are essentially preventing such cells uh, from turning into the terminally exhausted T cells. So, so, so we think that you know, what is reason, how, where do these exhausted T cell come from? We think that um, maybe there are some kind of pre-existing, but small amount of uh, uh, text precursors that are either inside the tumor or from the blood. Upon treatment, such cells that go through proliferation, they actually stop going uh, to the uh, exhausted T cells. So we call this process the clonal, clonal, clonal revival process. And then you say, wait, you know, uh, what we've learned is clonal replacement uh, based on the, the excellent work by Howard Chan's group. We know that if, at least for some cancer indications, the effective therapy is, is more related to, uh, to clonal replacement. But we think that um, uh, the both um, uh, uh, scenario can work in the cases where the patient would have a smaller, smaller lower level of, of the uh, tumor reactive T cells. What you observe are primarily the clonal uh, replacement uh, phenomena, but for patients who already have a large number of baseline tumor reactive T cells, like lung cancer, in fact, you, we, we do see a lot more uh, um, a clonal revival uh, 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 observation. And, and such pattern can also be seen in other cancer types like triple negative breast cancer. Again, here we use um, uh, breast cancer patients uh, treated with either uh, paclitaxel uh, or atezolizumab, the anti-PDL1 antibody from Genentech, uh, plus paclitaxel. Then again, we take the uh, 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 needle biopsy before and after treatment, then we study the dynamic changes here. So uh, in a way, you get generate single cell data, you get um, uh, uh, the single cell data before and after the treatment, and then uh, we can try to identify uh, the kind of cell types that at the baseline seem to be correlated with the tumor shrinkage. The second parameter we use is to look at the changes of such cells during the therapy to see what are the cells that seem to respond the most uh, to uh, during the therapy. So, so here, so what are the cell types that seem to be related to uh, therapeutic responses? So now if I simply look at the um, uh, in two different scenarios, we have responders and non-responders, we have pre-treatment, pre after treatment. And if you look, simply look at the uh, immunotherapies and between responders and non-responders, it seems like the responder would tend to have a large level of baseline CXCL13 positive CD4 and CD8 cells here. And in non-responders, they don't have so much. And after treatment, they remain, uh, the responders will remain, maintain higher level, it's actually proportionally higher level of such cells during the therapy. So it seems like the CXCL13 positive cells both predicted and immediate the effective responses to a tizolizumab blockade. Okay, but interestingly for chemotherapy, um, so it seems like for, even for responders, 
such cells actually depleted. So, so these cell types are actually proliferating and the chemotherapy will selectively kill the cells. So it seems like we, what we think is what is going on is that these kind of cells are probably what's needed for immunotherapy like anti pdl one to work. But unfortunately, if you have chemo added to the process, they actually selectively deplete such cells to make the combination therapy actually worse. Um, so that's a kind of theory. Um, and so, and we also identify other cell types like uh, B cells that seem to be related. And B cells have been linked to immunotherapy responses by multiple different groups. What we have found is that it's not all B cells that seem to be relevant. It's actually that there is a particular B cell subtype called follicular B cells that seem to be uh, exhibit, uh, exhibit a very high predictive index here. But we think that the importance of the B cell is not necessarily their ability to make antibodies, it's actually their ability to uh, regulate them and, uh, those, uh, and activate other T cells. So, so uh, we think that what's going on is the triple negative breast cancer uh, situation is that, and you, when you have the chemotherapy alone, the chemo would actually selectively kill the proliferating cancer cells, but along the way, they can also remove some of the beneficial uh, uh, T cells. And uh, in some other, uh, in, when you have uh, um, anti pdl one antibody uh, here, if you don't have a lot of uh, CXF13 positive T cells, you probably don't have responses. And, um, but uh, in a way, when you add the antibody, it actually, uh, you, you keep such a T cell you know, at, at a higher level um, in, in a way that we think that those kind of T cells are actually the very important cell types mediating uh, the effective therapies. So just to summarize, and um, we talked about the complex tissue microenvironment, and um, we talked about multiple tumor specific subtypes that may provide future opportunities for find novel targets. Because when you, once you find tumor specific cell types, then you can find ways to maybe to perturb uh, such cells, either inhibit or uh, eliminate and, or activate such uh, cell types. And once you develop the therapeutic strategies targeting cell types, then you can factor in the cross cancer differences because different cancer types harbor distinct immune properties. In that case, we need to have refined clinical strategies. Okay. So lastly, I just want to acknowledge uh, multiple people who are involved in the work I uh, presented here. I'm not going to name one by one, but uh, here we have our website that has more detailed contribution from different individuals and our collaborators. Thank you so much.